If I go and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. A wonderful promise. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have raised your Son to the right hand of your glory and bestowed on him the name above all other names. Assure us that as he reigns with you in heaven, so he abides with us on earth to the end of time. And so we ask you to bless us this morning as we gather in worship and fellowship, to be open to your word, to sing your praises, to join together in prayer, and to hear your message of love, that we may live our lives in faith and trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first hymn is well known, and we'll sing it beautifully on the Lord. It's a worship the King for glorious above.
let us dedicate the offering to God's work. God of all goodness, accept the gifts we bring. Use them and us for your glory and the work of your church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're using the information that came from Christian Aid in their service with a few additions here and there. And so, our opening prayers from their sheet reads, God our Comforter, source of our hope, be present to us today. Unite us as we worship. Give us ears to hear, hear the good news of your abundant transformative love. Stir up in us a prophetic voice, that we may proclaim the coming of your kingdom, inspiring us with the courage to serve you in word and deed, as together we build a world free from poverty. Creator God, you made us and cherished us as your beloved creation. We confess that we have failed to care for the world you brought into being. We have polluted the earth. We have consumed without thought for the future. <coughs> we have hardened our hearts and turned away from communities devastated by climate crisis. Out of the greatness of your love, Lord God, forgive us. Jesus, you call us to love our neighbour, to go the extra mile, we confess that we have failed to love others as you loved us. Too often we have ignored crimes for justice. We have given our energies to protecting what is ours and have failed to consider the needs of others. Out of your greatness of your love, Lord, forgive us. <coughs> Spirit of truth, you breathe wisdom upon us and guide our ways. We confess those times we have relied on ourselves alone, as though we had no need of you. Those times we have rejected the help our neighbours offer, because it would cost us our pride. We have declared ourselves dry ground, unable to grow the fruits of love, peace, joy and gentleness. Yet, through all our failings and faults, you never leave us. Out of the greatness of your love, Lord, forgive us. And together we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of our child, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Today is the first of seven days when we raise the profile of Christian aid and its fundraising activities. And so we, we, we will view a film of Amy Clark <coughs> in Nakaba province, Burundi. Many families in Burundi struggle daily to meet their basic needs. Food and land are in short supply. Healthcare is out of reach for many. The cost of living is soaring. Livelihoods are under threat by droughts, floods, and landslides. People are pushed to the brink of survival. My name is Nimogora Ali. I am 35 years old. My favorite people in the whole world are my three sons. I enjoy a lot being with my family. We like traditions and we have a fixed time for praying. It is an opportunity to talk to God 
because we're still alive thanks to God's grace. Pray up for Travel Twenty have gone through hardships. Because I was very poor as I was stuck inside a box. Through the support of Christian Aid and its partners, Alina and her neighbors were trained to form a village savings and loan association. They each pay in a small amount to build up a group fund and can loan to fund income generating activities. We have three savings groups in this community now. We work together to save and make loans. This has had a great impact on my life. I realized that women can achieve great things. I raise my children alone. I bring them up well. Nobody is going hungry. I managed to buy goats, which helped me a lot, and I bought a bicycle. Carrying goods to a home was difficult before getting a bicycle. We would carry 10 kilograms on our heads, but with a bicycle, be it 100 kilograms or 200 kilograms, we just tie it on and line quickly. We use it for fire and crops from the farm. I have a solar panel. I can turn on the lights so that my children can do their homework. <coughs> and I am building my own home. After finishing my house, I will continue to save with the association because I really wish for my children to send in the university. They are my hope for the future. With your help, we can work towards a world where families can push back against the inhumanity of poverty and fulfill their ambitions. From community events to individual challenges, Christian Aid Week is seven days of action, your way to fund lasting change. Together, we will beat extreme poverty. <coughs> An amazing woman. She had a first child when she was 14, a husband who beat her, brought in a second wife who then pushed out the first wife. She was on the streets looking for somewhere to rest, somewhere to get food, and it was going to a three day conference run by Christian Aid and its partners that showed her a way of moving forward, and that's the result. An amazing woman. She now has her three children living with her, which is the biggest thing in her life. Wonderful. <coughs> and so on the screen, we will have the prayer for Christian Aid Week. And I'm going to join you over there because uh, I can't see this in the <coughs> Loving God, Lord. Say daily. And we sing again. 
is take my life, Lord, let it go. <coughs> reading this morning is to be found on page 538 of the Good News Bible. It's Psalm 1. <laughs> Happy are those who reject the advice of evil men, who do not follow the example of sinners, or tell those who have no use for God. <clears throat> Instead, they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord, and they study it day and night. They are like trees that grow beside a stream, that bear fruit at the right time, and whose leaves do not dry up. They succeed in everything they do. But evil men are not like this at all. They are like straw that the wind blows away. Sinners will be condemned by God and kept apart from God's own people. The righteous are guided and protected by the Lord, but the dead the evil are on the way to their doom. <coughs> the New Testament reading is from the book of John. It's chapter 17, reading verses 6 to 19, and it's to be found on page 140 of the Pew Bibles. Jesus is speaking, and it's in the <coughs> I have made you known to those who gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word, and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. 
I gave them the message that you gave me, and they received it. They know that it is true, that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and my glory is shown through them. And now I am coming to you. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one just as you and I are one. While I was with them, I kept them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me. I protected them, and not one of them was lost, except the man who was bound to be lost, so that the scripture might come true. And now I am coming to you, and I say these things in the world, so that they might have my joy in their hearts in all its fullness. I gave them your message, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but I do ask you to keep them safe from the evil one. Just as I do not belong to the world, they do not belong to the world. Dedicate them to yourself, and you <coughs> the truth. Your word is truth. I sent them into the world, just as you sent me into the world. And for their sake, I dedicate myself to you, in order that they too may be truly dedicated to you. We're singing another good one. <clears throat> it's come down a love divine.
snow that falls so deeply <coughs> and at the inappropriate times of the year where nature's growth is crushed. This is a kind of crisis, and unfortunately, it affects the poorest of the world's populations the most deeply. This is the situation Christian aid faces and offers to help with. Not the top down type of help that is a quick fix, but community engagement that allows the recipients to take control and to rebuild, replant, rethink for their own communities, for their own families. A step of empowerment. And we are invited to be part of that work. Work for the poorest, work for Christ in the world. We then read from John 17, 16 to 19, and see that Jesus has done his work. He has lived as a human. He was born, grown through childhood, becoming an adult, working as a carpenter builder. Then called by God, he chooses disciples, and together they travel, teaching, healing, proclaiming God's plan for humanity making friends and enemies, enemies who passed <coughs> Jesus down and arrested, charged and executed him, thinking that was it, he was gone, problem solved, he was buried. They took a deep breath, only for God to raise Jesus from the grave and the world was changed, ready to become again what God had planned. And desired. But Jesus' death will deal a blow to his followers, who will be bereft and worried, and so he prays them that God will protect them. He asks that their lives will be shaped by the truth of God's word, that they may live in unity together, willing to share the good news of Christ, and the world will be shaken out of its disbelief. Jesus prays that his followers will be with him in glory at the end of time. And the disciples will take his message out into the world and everyone will have the opportunity to be part of God's wondrous plan. We are here. We are part of that plan. We are those chosen to share that message. We are called to live our lives in Christ. Now I have a young friend who is what I would call a Christian flitter. She will sometimes come to church for two weeks on the shot, and then we don't see her in church for weeks and weeks and weeks, sometimes months. Her mental health is not always good either. Um, she's quite um, an intense young person. And I meet her in the street and we often have a chat. Usually when I'm desperate to get somewhere else, I just have to sort of root myself and be there for her. And she, in turn, often sends me a YouTube clip. And this week was an exception. <coughs> and when I looked through it, I thought, this speaks to Christian Edward. So I recount as best I can. The little film showed a group of young people lining up for a park race. The prize was a wonderful, crisp $100 bill. So they all lined up. The guy in charge then asked them to take two steps paces, two steps forward, when they asked the last question. First question Step forward if your parents are still married. And then, step forward. Step forward if your dad lives in your home. And many stepped forward. Step forward if you can afford to go to college. And many did. But some had not moved at all and were being left far behind. And the guy continued. Step forward if you have never needed to contribute to the family budget. And some did. When he came to the end of his questions, he asked those at the front to turn round and see where the other young people were. 
And there were some far away who had not been able to move a single step. And then he said, in quite a fierce voice, I challenge you to open your mind to the fact that some of you, through no effort on your part, have been able to take advantage of every opportunity and move away from the others present here. Those at the back, through no fault of their own, have to work as well as attend school. Many are black and come from housing problems. But if they had the opportunities, the life breaks of those at the front of this group, they surely would be in the running for that $100 prize. And the race started. And I sat and watched my screen, cheering the black kids on from the back. But of course, they couldn't catch up. They were too far to stay. It struck me that this is what Christianity Week is all about. And this is the text which those kids have displayed at the end of that film. It's from 1 John 3, 17 to 19. If we have all we need and see people in need, we must have pity on them, or else we cannot say we love God. Children, you show your love for others by truly helping them and not merely by talking about it. When we love others, we know that we belong to the truth and we feel at ease in the presence <coughs> of God. In a world which is broken, may we as Christians find God's way of helping the world to be restored, re-engaged and resurrected as our Lord was resurrected. And now he lives and reigns with God our Father and the Holy Spirit in heaven and on earth, in our hearts and in our churches. Thanks be to God. Amen. We see again beauty for brokenness. <coughs>
projects across the world, all year round, to create lasting change. Like here in Burundi, where with your support, families are changing their own futures. Together, this is how we'll beat extreme poverty. This Christian Aid Group, what will you do? Search Christian Aid Group today. to our prayers of intercession. <coughs> Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. Our Father, we are thankful for your love, for your love that somehow changes us somehow turns us upside down and yet in the process makes us more holy ourselves. Lord, we offer you our gratitude for all who have shown us tenderness, care and compassion. For those who have seen us through troubled times and have brought us hope. We pray for those we love that we have not loved. We look at Aileen's experience and we hold in mind people around the world who know what it is to be treated as less than human beings. <coughs> May we work together to uphold the dignity of every human being so that no one feels forgotten. God whose love endures forever Lord, we are thankful for those who inspire us with their strength, courage, and perseverance. We pray for people around the world who are brought to the brink by extreme poverty, for people who struggle to survive. 
this morning we pray especially for our families in Burundi who do not have sufficient food, who do not have clean water or access to health care. For people who are desperate and who feel Lord, fuel us with the fire of your spirit. Fill us with a fierce determination to end the outrage of poverty. May we hear the cries of those who are excluded from power. May we speak up for them for a more equal and just world. God, whose love endures forever, hear our prayer. Lord, we are thankful for peacemakers and healers. And we pray for all who are reaching across divisions and acting to end violent conflict. May political leaders use their power wisely to further the cause of peace. And we pray particularly for areas of conflict. The Middle East, the border of Ukraine, <coughs> Sudan, Burundi. We remember these places with sorrow and lives lost, and lives destroyed by conflict. God, whose love endures forever, hear our prayer. Lord, we are thankful for love in action <coughs> and give thanks for the cake bakers, the runners, and the humble encouragers. We are grateful to those who give their time, energy, and resources to sponsor walks, craft sales, singathons. Cycle, swims, and a whole host of fundraising challenges, and we pray that each of us may recognise the gifts that we have to share, and that we too may see the richness of our neighbours' gifts and talents. Help us to remember that ending poverty isn't just about the things that money can buy, but is also about the joyful living that you desire for each of us, that we may all be free to live joyfully. God, whose love endures forever, hear our prayer. <coughs> our Father, we are thankful that you offer us comfort in our sorrows. Make us open to receive that comfort. We give thanks that when everything else around us seems to crumble, you promise us that your love will remain solo and steadfast. Think again of Amy and all that she has been through. And we pray for her, for her children and her community. That you will continue your work in her home <coughs> and her land in her name. And we pray for others known to us who are suffering. Pray for those who have lost someone that they love, especially those whose grief is very real. Lord, may we all know your peace. Thank you for loving us. We give you these prayers in Jesus' name. Give thanks to the Lord for he is. Again, we sing a love that sets all people free. Oh, my. 
which is followed by the blessing which will be said by his son. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you have abundantly blessed us. Your mercy knows no bounds. We offer these gifts and commit ourselves to action. Following your command to love one another, we give thanks for the vital work of Christian aid and for all who support this work. May all that we bring in this coming week transform the prospects of those living in extreme poverty. God of justice, mercy and peace, send us out to serve you. May your extraordinary love radiate through our world, our words and our actions, every day of our lives. Amen. And together. May we be persevering in faith. May we go out in hope. May we act and speak with love. By the grace of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Comforter. Amen.